Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at simple harmonic motion. This is the third and final video that I'm gonna make on it. I'm gonna be talking about frequency and period in today's video. The other two videos in this topic, I went over conservation of energy and the equation with simple harmonic motion. But right now, I'm gonna be focusing on frequency and period. And so here's what I'm gonna say for those. First of all, we need to know the equations with frequency, period, and angular frequency. And here are the equations we need to know. First, T equals one over F. In other words, period is equal to one over the frequency. This is a very famous equation. Also, the reciprocal of this equation is true, meaning F is equal to one over T. Frequency equals one over period. By the way, you may not even know what period or frequency mean, so let me define them right now so there's no confusion. Period is the time to complete one oscillation or rotation or revolution or whatever you wanna call it. We usually call it oscillations in simple harmonic motion. And then the frequency is the exact opposite. It's the number of oscillations per second. Technically, it doesn't have to be per second. It could be per minute or per hour. Like, for instance, in your car, it will actually record the rotations per minute of your tires. That's whenever you see RPM on your dashboard. That's your frequency for the tires, and that's in rotations per minute. But in physics, we're going to be using it per second. That's just the SI unit we always use. So looking at the equations one more time, we have T equals 1 over F. We also have F equals one over T. This is technically the same equation. The next equation I'm gonna be talking about is the angular frequency, and that is going to be the symbol omega. Omega was used elsewhere in physics. It's also called the angular velocity, but we are not talking about angular velocity right now. We're talking about angular frequency. I don't have a good definition of angular frequency, I'll be honest but I do have the equation, which is all I really care about, and that equation is omega equals two pi f, two pi times the frequency. If you don't like that one, you can also use this one, omega equals two pi over t, the period. Both of these equations work, depending on if I wanna solve for frequency or period. And then the other thing we know about springs and simple harmonic motion is that omega is equal to the square root of k divided by m, in other words, the spring constant divided by the mass. What that also means is if I solve for frequency in the equation omega equals two pi f, I can actually solve for frequency and I get one over two pi root k over m. Or if I wanted to solve this for period, which I could do that as well, that's gonna be two pi root m over k. Now technically all three of these equations are true. I don't recommend memorizing all three of them. Typically, you just need one, and then you can derive the others. But if you don't like deriving, especially not on the test, then fine, you have to memorize these. They will not give you all three on an equation sheet. At most, they'll give you one of them. I don't know which one they'll give you. Depends on the school, depends on the teacher, depends on the professor. But this is the one I usually see given on the test, which means you probably have to memorize the other two. And so finally, let's look at some example problems using this so we can understand what's going on. So here's the first one. A spring mass system undergoes simple harmonic motion. The spring constant is 100 newtons per meter and the mass is two kilograms. What is the period and frequency of the spring? So it doesn't matter which one we find first, I'll choose to find period first. And I know period is equal to two pi square root of m over k, where m is the mass and k is the spring constant, which means that it's gonna be the square root of mass two divided by k 100 I plug this in a calculator and I will get 0.89 and the units are seconds and that's my period. Meaning this simple harmonic motion, this oscillator is gonna go back and forth one time in 0.89 seconds, so about a second. If I wanna find the frequency, I can use that long equation or I can just say frequency equals one over the period or one over 0.89 and if I do that, then I get an answer of 1.13 and the units for frequency, you can either use the hertz, which is hz, or you can use the units of one over seconds, or you can use the units of seconds to the negative first power. 
Typically, this is the most common unit you'll see is Hertz HZ. So that's the one I'm gonna be using for this problem. So hopefully you don't have any questions so far. If you do, just post them in the comments below. We're gonna look at one more example now. Okay, so we have a spring mass system has a period of one second, but has an unknown mass and spring constant. You decide to replace the spring with another one with twice the spring constant. What is the new period going to be? So this is a classic example that you're gonna see in this class. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the period equation, t equals two pi root m over k. And you'll notice I don't know the mass and I don't know the spring constant, but I know whatever this is, this is equal to one. The reason why that's important is when I replace the spring with a spring constant twice as much, the new period, which I'll just call t new, sometimes I see people call it t prime, either one's fine, but the new period is gonna be two pi times the square root of mass, which remained unchanged, divided by two k now. And to find out what this new period is going to be, what I recommend you do is you pull out the two pi root m over k and you see what's left. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is, let me write it like this, two pi root m divided by k, and what's left over is this two right here, which is in the square root and the denominator. So what I'm saying is I can write this as times root one over two, and this is perfectly legal. And then what you realize is, hey, this was my original t, this was t equals one. And this is the part that changed, this one over root two. So the new period is one times root one over two. So the answer is root one over two, and you can plug that in your calculator if you want, I don't really care. This is gonna be my answer for the new period if you do plug this in a calculator, you'll get 0 0.707, which means it's a smaller period. In other words, this spring mass system looks like it's going faster now, because it's a smaller period. It's completing the oscillations faster. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, of course, you can post in the comments and I will get back to you. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.